Hello everyone, my name is Quentin Rossetto and today a quick tip on how to reduce uh, voxel density based on their distance to the nearest point of the second input. Let's get started. So we're going to create a geometry and have a fluid simulation. To make it easy, we're just going to get the pyro below smoke. I'm going to just modify within it so it goes slightly faster in the output and check everything except the density. And let's simulate for like 60 frame. So we have a nice big chunk of smoke. Oh, 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 all right. Not to be good. Perfect. Okay. So uh, you have your smoke, you're happy with it, it's in a cache, but you notice some problem with it. Either you want to hide some part, like the bottom of it, or your camera is really close to the smoke, and you want, uh, as a rule of thumb, you want to avoid to have your camera within a smoke, uh, with voxel right in front of it, because that can be really impactful on the render time of your smoke. So maybe you want to create some kind of little bubble around your camera to avoid having any uh, voxel there. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use Vex because Vex is amazing. Let's drop a volume wrangle and connect it to our null. So that's our first input. And to represent my camera or whatever else, I'm just going to add an add with one point and connect it to the second input. Okay, so we're gonna need two vector. First one is gonna be our voxel, voxel position and second one is gonna be the nearest point on the second input. Easiest one first. Uh, my vector v pose for my voxel position is gonna be equal to at p. And that's going to be bring me back each voxel position. Second one is a bit trickier. First, I need to find which point is the closest to my uh, voxel. For this, uh, I need to create an integer. I'm going to call it n pose for near point and npt sorry for near point. And we're going to use the point, the near point function. It's going to ask for two, uh, two information. First, which geometry do I have to check? Well, that's going to be my second input. So it's going to be number one. And uh, from uh, which vector should I check what's the nearest point? It's going to be V pulse. So one and the pulse. All right, now that I have the number, I can ask for more information. What I want to know is the P uh, attribute. P attribute is a vector, three float, and it's on the point. So to get it, I'm going to use the point function. Let's create another vector. Let's call it NPTP. And we're going to use a point function. It's going to ask first, so which geometry? That's number one. What's the attribute name? It's going to be P. And what's the point number? Well, that's going to be NPT. So this and next line. Okay, we have our two vector. Now let's measure the distance between them. Create a float distance and it's going to be equal to surprise distance function that measures the distance between two vector. Amazing. Pipos and NPTP. All right. So now I have my distance. The problem is that this distance is not normalized. It's going to be like if there is seven units between my voxel and the um, my point, it's going to give me seven. And I can't use uh, the distance as it is because what I want to do is be able to multiply 
my density, my smoke density by this distance. So I need a value that go between zero and one. Uh, everything that's zero is going to be uh, void of uh, the void of uh, smoke. So it's going to be uh, no density at all. And everything that's going to be at one is going to keep the actual density. To do this, I'm going to refit my distance float. So distance is going to be go equal to the fit function. It's going to ask me for five things. First thing, on what am I working? I'm working on distance. What are the input min and the input max? Well, that's going to depend on what I'm doing and uh, the complexity of my scene. So I'm going to create two slider, chf min and chf max. And what do we want? Do I want as an output? Well, that's going to be zero for the minimum and one for the maximum. Let's close this, and there we got it. Let's initialize our two input, and by default, they go between zero and one. But uh, given the size of my smoke, I'd like to have the sliders a bit uh, longer. So Let's go on to the little wheel here, edit parameter interface, and let's change the range to 0 to 10, for example. Apply, accept. And now all I have to do left is take my density. So it already exists, so I'll get my little at and multiply, multiply equal it to the distance float. Right now, I don't see much happening. Oh, but yes, there is. Look at this. So something happening here. Let's increase our distance. And we can see it's starting to fade. And if we increase the mean, now it's getting really apparent what we're doing. So basically, what we're telling him is if the voxel position is less than 1.8 uh, units, from the nearest point, then the density is going to be equal to zero, so no smoke at all. And from 1.8 to uh, 5.8 to 6, then you're going to have some kind of fade happening. It's going to be like 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on, until you have your 100% uh, density value, or density multiplied by 1. Uh, so as it is, the setup is working. I like to have a little bit more control on how I make my fade. So uh, I'm just going to put this distance within a ramp, ch ramp. Let's call it fade. Let's close bracket. And I'm going to change the interpolation to be spline because that's my favorite one. And here then I can have slightly more control on how it's happening. And let's try to move our point. I'll drop a transform. I'm going to merge it so we're going to see if it's working with two points. So this transform over there, it seems to be working just fine. So well, that's, uh, that's basically it. As I said, it's pretty useful to control some aspect of your smoke post simulation. Be able to adjust some points that you don't like or to control uh, the amount of voxel around your camera. That's all for today. I hope it's going to be useful. Don't forget to make a preset if you want to use it again and not having to set it up all at, all again every time. Uh, like I said, that's all for me today. Uh, see you soon and bye-bye.